Islam hardliners. Without the support of U.S. military, the government has collapsed. The president the has Taliban fled the country. The Taliban take control of Afghanistan. 20 years after they were forced from power, fighters entered the presidential palace. Kabul streets Kabul. are patrolled by the Taliban fighters. It seems that the airport is thousands of people desperately try to leave there the country. There is panic and fear everywhere. Thousands of prisoners set free, including members of Al Qaeda. <laughs> Our friends are going to get killed. They're going to kill us. Our women are not going to have any more rights. You might have seen this important news pop up on your news feed like very frequently. No, I'm not talking about crypto with NDTV. Though that thing is getting really annoying. NDTV, if you're watching this, please, please stop it. It's time. Please. Are you also curious about crypto? No. So let's move on to the more important news which we have to talk about. The Afghanistan crisis. You know, Taliban, a bunch of assholes like the ISIS who think religion is the integral and primary part of life and who think that they should shove their teachings down people's throat even if they don't like it, just shove it down so they can kill people with it and suppress women with it. Because pretty normal it is. And if you haven't checked out my video on Wahhabism versus secularism, please go and check it out. I have made a video on it before where I am talking about Saudi Arabia and what an asshole nation it is. But before I get into the present crisis, let me give you a brief history of the Taliban. Taliban basically are a bunch of assholes like the Taliban according to the Pashto language means students and they came in rise in the 1990s in the northern Pakistan when Soviet Union withdrew from Afghanistan. Get some vodka. Sorry. It is believed that the movement of Taliban is actually funded by the Apne Saudi Arabia. You know, Saudi Arabia, like it funds most of the terrorist organizations allegedly. You know, allegedly. Pata to nahi hai kuch, par karte honge. But you can't say for sure. The promise made by the Taliban in Pashtun areas of Pakistan and Afghanistan was to restore peace and security. <laughs> and enforce their own version of Sharia or Islamic law once they are in power. He either he finished, bhai. Utna extremism or thus de. Ab kya hi bacha hai bolne ko. In September 1995, they captured Herat, bordering Iran, and exactly one year later, they captured the Afghan capital Kabul, overthrowing the regime of President Burhanuddin Rabbani, one of the founding fathers of Afghan Mujahideen that resisted the Soviet occupation. By 1998, the Taliban control almost 90% of Afghanistan. Taliban also introduced their punishments according to the Sharia law, like. who are convicted for murder they will be killed publicly executed publicly who are doing theft their hands will be cut off bhai kaatne kutne ka to bhai bahut bahut intezam kiya hai bhai men were required to grow beards and women obviously to wear burqa obviously the taliban literally banned television music and cinema and girls who were at the age of 8 or above weren't allowed to go to school <laughs> which i approve of <laughs> see if women won't get educated how will they fight for their own rights if they don't they don't know what their own rights are <laughs> smart move smart move by taliban <laughs> even i like it when women stay in the kitchen because that's where they're supposed to be right don't get it. they were accused of many human right violations <laughs> obviously no shit <laughs> if you go to see the taliban structure it is extremely weird they have a proper structure like if you think that they are all disorganized no they are very organized so they have their own leader and all but on the right side as you can see mulla abdul hakim <laughs> is the judge <laughs> taliban has a judge judiciary they have <laughs> there are various commissions they have military intelligence political economic <laughs> economic they have nirmala sitaraman ko bhej do wahan pe udhar ka economy finish taliban would last only <laughs> now you have seen the rise of taliban but why did the us enter afghanistan like why the answer is i say maje aa rahe the so actually after the 911 attack which happened in 2001 by osama bin laden of al qaeda The Taliban was accused of sheltering Al Qaeda people and Osama bin Laden. So the U.S. thought, "I'm ghar mein gus ke maarenge." So on 7th October 2001, U.S. launched a lot of attacks on Afghanistan, and by the first week of December, the Taliban regime collapsed. Many Taliban leaders took refuge in a Pakistani city called Quetta, and they operated the Taliban from there. Taliban slowly started gaining their strength back and started launching attacks on Kabul. 
there were many peace talks between the Taliban and the Afghan government and the US but all of them failed because everyone had their doubts on each other so the violence continued but in february 2020 things changed the us and taliban had a peace deal and after that the taliban changed they stopped all these big big attacks which they carried out always on kabul ye sab they stopped it and they started conducting targeted assassinations <laughs> what you thought taliban became peaceful <laughs> What a joke. <laughs> the targets were journalists, peace activists, judges, and obviously women and par. <laughs> How can you miss women and par? Women and par? Pagal ho gaye ho kya? Despite the Afghan officials saying that they are going to be extremely vulnerable after the US withdraws from Afghanistan, apne AK hangal of US. Itna sanata kyun hai bhai? Joe Biden decided to withdraw the US army from Afghanistan after almost two decades. As the US started withdrawing from Afghanistan one by one, Taliban started taking over cities of Afghanistan and finally surrounded Kabul. The Afghan forces weren't really strong enough to fight off the Talibanis, so they surrendered. The Taliban literally warned India that if they interfered in their internal matter, then it would be bad for India. Get me? Internal matter. The US intelligence predicted that the Taliban won't be able to take over the whole of Afghanistan. It will be just a few parts and it will take a lot of months for it. But that was proven wrong. They just took over Afghanistan in a matter of few days, literally few days. Now they have captured Kabul and they have overthrown the Afghan government and apne bhai president of Afghanistan Ashraf Ghani was like Fuck this shit, I'm out. So he fled from Afghanistan. There was a prediction that there would be a civil war, but the Afghan forces hardly retaliated and just surrendered. So it was done very quickly. Now, was the U.S. withdrawal good or bad? Let me put two perspectives to you. The ones who say it is good, it is for the U.S. as billions and trillions of dollars were spent here and many lives were lost, and the Afghanistan forces. were not getting any better the ones who say it is bad is because obviously the life of the afghani civilians is literally screwed like gone people are being killed women are being kept at homes they aren't allowed to leave without a male and they are forcefully being married to terrorists the united kingdom too said that the withdrawal of the us army from afghanistan is going to affect them now let's come to the indian aspect whatever you think the us should have done they should have not done it they should have done it doesn't matter but they have withdrawn and this is going to have international implications and we must be worried about it especially india india has had quite diplomatic ties with the afghanistan we have helped them in terms of infrastructure roads healthcare we recently built a new parliament for them so we have had those good relations with them but all that now has gone for a toss because Taliban has taken over. There is also a danger of Taliban taking over the arms and ammunition of the Afghan forces and then selling it off, or they might get diverted to India-specific militant groups. So there are high chances that attacks on India might increase. The presence of US and Pakistan and Afghanistan also made sure that we got proper intelligence when it came to terrorism. Indian intelligence agencies cooperated closely with their counterparts in Afghanistan's external intelligence agency, the National Directorate of Security. All of this, the intelligence we got regarding terrorism will all come to an end now. A former Indian intelligence official compares the situation as akin to someone turning off the lights in those countries. So India has been on a war against terrorism since a very long time. So these developments are going to shatter it a little. Even when it came to the death of Danish Siddiqui, the Taliban said that you know he died in a crossfire, but some people say that he was actually captured and killed and mutilated. So there are chances that this might have been done on the orders of Pakistan. India has a very challenging way ahead and it's going to be extremely difficult. But the biggest cause of concern right now is the civilians of Afghanistan. You can't imagine what they are going through. It's going to be extreme torture. You saw people getting on top of the plane and just flying off with it and then falling down from the plane like so badly they want to leave Afghanistan because of Taliban. That's how fucked up Taliban is. So let's see and just hope for the best when it comes to solutions. Don't have any. and that's about it thank you everyone for watching the video see you guys in the next one bye bye